welcome. Today we're going to learn how to paint a slice of watermelon. Just briefly, the, this is what we need. Two brushes, one thin for the little dots and a flatter brush or a bigger water brush, depending on what you have. I usually have two jars of water so that I get my brushes really, really clean. Um, the colors we're going to use are green. You can use a lighter green, black, um, some orange and red. As you can see here, I will show you how to do some of the mixes because watercolor mixes really different on the paper. The other thing you need is watercolor paper. Now you can get this from a normal sketch pad that usually says the weight of the watercolor. Sometimes it says cold press or hot press and that depends on how um, the roughness and texture of the watercolor because watercolors sit on top of the paint on top of the paper and then it seeps in and when it dries it looks very different so let's work through this very very simple exercise step by step but hopefully we can produce something that we'll like to look at okay so just to show you again i've got two jars of water as you can see, this is a bit dirty and that's lighter, but you can start off with two clean ones. We've got salt. I'll show you what we're going to do with the salt. Um, I have my paints in these little palettes because I've got a big tray of watercolor paints, which you can usually buy from a brand, or you can have a tube a set of tubes it doesn't matter what kind of watercolors you have these are my two brushes I've got a number 12 you could have a number 10 or something um, along those lines and a more fine brush with a long tip some paper towel because we need to dry our brushes and that's about it and your paper now I have different types of watercolor paper and um, just make sure you have a pad of particularly watercolor paper right so step number one our brushes are dry at this stage what I like to do is you can either put your paint on your palette or you can work from your squares at this stage I assume you have paint on your palette you wet your brush and I'm going to go for the orange and lift it up and just dab my brush all around it. And before we even start, I'm going to go on the edge and I'm going to paint on the paper to see how that color comes through. So as you can see, this is where there's more water, more pigment, less water, and as it dries down, we can wash our brush, and I'd like to show you how to dilute that, just by adding a bit of clean water, and it takes the pigment away. Now we won't know what that looks like until it dries. So I'm gonna take my blow dryer, Another way of drying it is by taking your paper towel and just dabbing it and you can see on the paper towel there's water that's lifted off and already you see from the paper towel you see some dots of white and the pigment. So watercolour is really about playing with the pigment on the paper. You can make it darker, you can make it lighter. With this watermelon we're going to work as you can see, there's different shades of a lighter orange and red. And I'm going to work really simply to show you how to produce a watermelon 
slice effect. Right, so we're going to use our orange first and dab it into the paint that you put on your palette or from your box. And then we're going to do a triangle shape. So starting with a point at the top, I just want to mark how big my slice is going to be. So I've got the squares there. And now with the side of my brush, I'm going to do just one line down up to there. And the other side, I'm going to bring it to the other. Now don't worry if the effect is like that because we're going to add some water to, to spread the paint around. Then we're going to do a curve at the bottom. So now I'm going to just wash my brush and before the paint dries on the paper, I'm going to take some of the water and just tease it off onto the page. As you can see, and I like this effect here. It almost looks like someone's eaten it, but we'll go over it for the purposes of this exercise. There we go. It doesn't have to be exactly straight or accurate. So I'm going to add a bit more red because the next thing I want to do, and it doesn't have to be spread out equally, is more or less an experiment with what how salt works with the pigment. So I'll take my, the paint is still a bit wet, make sure it's not dry. And I'm gonna take pinches of salt and I'm just going to spread it around where the pips would be. Do you see where the pips in some parts are? And already, not, not too close together, just make sure that they're spread out. And we're going to leave that be until it dries naturally for now. And we're going to work on the rind. So as you can see, there's a bit of white and then we've got a bit of green. So I'm going to leave a space for the white for now. And I'm going to take my really small brush. Now make sure you have clean water because the pigment of the red will contaminate. So I've got a glass of water with me here or a jar of water, which you could have. Of course, I can't really move from this video, but for you, you can go and replenish your water and have cleaner water. And I'm gonna take kind of a light green I have two greens on my palette. I've got, this is what's called, um, um, well, it's a, a viridian green, and this has a bit of yellow in it. So I'm going to go for this yellowy green. And I'm just gonna get the pigment on the side of my brush, dipping water in, and just loosening the paint. Remember, we've got, we're, we're going to leave the white space and then we're going to do a thin sometimes we don't have to do something too elaborate to give the illusion of what we're creating so already when someone looks at that they can see i'm adding i'm just dipping my brush cleaning my brush and on the paper just adding water and spreading the pigment around a bit. Because the beauty of watercolour is about how the pigment and the water work or sit on the surface of the paper. So we'll come, we'll come back and work with that. As you can see with the slice, this green kind of seeps into the white a bit. So I'm just going to wash my brush really well. And then on the edge, very gently, I'm just going to lift some of the green up 
so that it doesn't look like a harsh straight line. It looks like a fruit. Natural. Careful to leave the white. So now I'm going to, there's quite a bit of water there, but already, as you can see, the salt, what the salt is doing is it's grabbing the pigment from the page and it's creating these white spots on the paper. So it's a simple thing, just putting salt on the pigment and this works for watercolors. I'm going to use my um, hair dryer again. Now at this point, you can walk away, go take a break, let it dry naturally. That's the best way. Using a blow dryer um, helps it, but if it dries really naturally until it's completely dry, that's the best way. And once that is done, you take your paper towel and when yours is completely dry, what you're going to do is you just, you can flick the salt off the paper. But for my purposes, I'm just going to lift it off. So this creates that kind of watermelon effect with the white and the orange. The seeds here are uh, kind of brown, but I'm going to go for the typical black pips. So remember to make sure that your, your, your red is completely dry before you just take your small brush and you just make little random, random pips. And that's just basically how you do a watermelon slice. Now what you could do is you could make this into a card. You can, um, you know, a thank you card or any sort of card really. Um, and it just already lifts the page out. You can, if you wanted to add a bit of dark green on the bottom. This is where you start using your artistic license. The basics are there, but you can start playing around. But remember not to overwork your paint because watercolor is about building on the base and making it very light and easy. I can see a bit of dark on that side, so I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to use the same pigment And just add a bit of texture and dimension. Putting back in the colour. And there you have it. Just two colours, well three colours and a bit of salt and you've got a watermelon slice.